Hello folks, this is Sula speaking, and you're listening to a commentary on League of Legends, with this one featuring Annie. I'm exactly. playing in a pre-made team, with Mookie playing Ash, with Maleficent playing Kakali, with Mostly Harmless playing as Nunu, and with Donsky, who's playing as Tarek. And I'm sorry if that screen went by a little bit quickly, I guess I started the recording too, too late. What we're going to do, in terms of laning assignments, is we're going to have Mookie take the middle lane, playing as Ash. I'm going to take the top lane, along with Mostly Harmless, who's playing as Nunu. And then Maleficent and Donsky are going to take the bottom lane. So we'll have Annie and Nunu in the top lane, we'll have Ash in the middle lane, and then we'll have Tarek and Akali down in the bottom lane. Since I've already dealt a lot with Annie in some of the previous videos, what I'm going to try to focus on in this video is two different things. First of all, a little bit about champion positioning, where you should be positioned, both in terms of the laning phase and then also in terms of team fights. So I'll try to look at some examples of that that play out throughout this game. And then I'm also going to try to focus on how to initiate combat. Certain moves are very useful, particularly in terms of team fights, in terms of how to initiate, how to get the combat started. We've seen some examples of that in the past with some different videos, things like initiating with a Moomoo's Bandage Toss, initiating with an Ash Arrow, and I'm going to try to look at that, maybe not so much in this video because this is part one, but in other videos uh, that played out in this game in terms of different ways to try and initiate combat. The way that the, how the, a team fight gets started has a lot to do with which side is going to come out victorious in the end. Anyway, in terms of this lane, you can see I'm up here with Mostly Harmless, and Mostly Harmless is playing with Nunu, a character that you don't see all that often, but has a number of abilities that are pretty useful. Nunu has, uh, just to run through his abilities quickly, he has Consume, which I think is his Q skill, not 100% sure, but essentially Nunu eats a minion and he gains health back. So pretty useful during the laning phase. He has Blood Boil, which is an ability that increases attack speed and movement speed, and he can use it both on himself and on an allied champion. If Nunu uses it on an ally, then he gets the benefit as well. He also has Ice Blast, where Nunu shoots out a little ice projectile that not only deals, deals damage and slows the opponent. And then he also has his ultimate, which deals area of effect damage. Yeah, he channels for, I think, three seconds, and then deals a lot of damage at the end of it to anyone that's in the area. Oh, by the way, I'll also point out that I hadn't played Annie in a couple of days, and my farming was pretty bad at the start of the game. You'll see me miss a bunch of minions, but I ended up doing a little bit better. Yeah, so you can see didn't get a single one of those minions in that wave. Now, a little bit about laning here. We did not do a good job there, not only in last hitting, but also because we pushed the minion wave pretty far forward. That's not what you want to do. You want to, and once again, I miss out on a minion kill there, so oh, pretty pretty terrible farming. You want to focus on last hitting. You don't want to just be auto-attacking the minions, because you'll do what we did here. You'll push the minion wave forward, and that's not what you want. You want to be in the middle of the lane, or generally back towards your tower. You don't want to be way up by the enemy team's tower. You can see the other team is actually doing this as well. They weren't trying to attack our minions because they didn't want to push too far forward. Now we've done the right thing and backed off a little bit, so that's gonna make it easier for us to farm, and it's also going to make it so that we don't get pushed, don't get sucked too far forward towards their tower. With Rise and Master Yi, between Rise's Spell Flux, that's the thing that the little uh, bouncing ball that you see, and between that and Master Yi's Alpha Strike, they're going to push the lane forward just by using their skills to farm, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Now, a, a little bit about positioning. Notice how Mostly Harmless is taking a lot of attacks from the minions. You don't want to do that. He was just too far forward. You don't want to get caught in front of your own minions, because then you're going to get targeted by the enemy minions, and this early in the game, it's going to do a lot of damage to you. You can see how much damage he's taking, and again, see, Mostly Harmless is taking more shots from the minions. That's not what you want to be doing so just a little little bit about positioning there and again my uh my disintegrate from annie is a little too weak to kill these minions right now okay another thing that bears pointing out is notice that even though we've only played for four minutes and we've really only been laning for about two minutes mostly harmless is already almost completely out of mana which is not good um, mostly harmless you're just using your skills a little bit okay. too often you want to focus on last hitting uh, it's actually shouldn't be all that tough to farm with Nunu. You, you should focus on just consuming minions. And you see there, Mostly Harmless uses Clarity, which again will solve the problem, but you, Clarity is, is a pretty weak option as far as summoner spells go. I, it's really only useful when you're, when you're kind of starting out with the game. Uh, at, at a certain point, you just want to get in the habit of not running out of mana and, uh, and not relying on Clarity, essentially. 
that's what I'm trying to say. So um, anyway, just, just a little pointer here. Now, right here, our positioning is much better. You can see how I try to stay behind the minions, just coming forward either to last hit or to fire off Annie's Disintegrate, which is where I want to be. And as we go back and forth, as usual. So you can see, I think that someone on their team used uh, Clarity as well. Not 100% sure there, but it looked like it. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I heard the little clarity noise go off there on the other team. Yeah, okay, there it is. That's what I was referring to, yeah. So one of them, either Rise or Master Yi, just used clarity as well. And I mean, sure, it's nice to get the extra mana, but it's not so nice when you're trying to get away and you could have avoided dying if you had flash and you took clarity instead. Again, mostly harmless, Just you just kind of went forward there and allowed yourself to get harassed by the other team. I mean, I know that Nunu uh, has a melee auto, melee auto attack, not a ranged one, so you, it, it does make it a little bit more difficult, but um, you're just getting caught a little bit too far forward too often here and taking unnecessary harassment. And right here, mostly harmless just walks into the middle of the enemy team for, for no real reason and just hands the enemy team first blood, so that was not a good play there. I'm not exactly sure what uh, what MH was trying to do there, but uh, it, it didn't work out, and there was n there was really no need reason to do that. So, uh, an example of being in the wrong position, just heading forward. So that leaves me to hold the lane by myself. But fortunately, Annie's pretty good at doing that. So again, I mean, you can see there's two of them coming. There's a big minion wave, but there's there's no reason to panic. Just focus on farming these minions as best you can. Uh, if they want to come forward, they're going to take shots from the tower. See, Yi gets a little too aggressive. He comes forward and takes a shot from the tower. So not that, not real, no real reason to worry. I can focus on last hitting here. And there, I'm just a little bit late. And let's see if I can get this last one. And, oh, well, I thought I was going to get that one, but I actually didn't. One of the things to keep in mind is the melee minions. If you don't hit them at all, generally... Two shots from the tower will leave them just about dead. So you can have the tower hit them twice and then immediately auto attack after that. And that will generally get a kill on the on the uh, melee minions. Caster minions are a little bit more difficult because they'll die in two shots from the tower. But the caster minions are pretty e or the me melee minions are pretty easy to kill once you understand sort of how the tower works. The caster ones you will need uh, a little bit more work to deal with. And there I miss out on another minion. So Mostly Harmless is doing a lot better here, just playing a little bit more defensively. You want to, uh, even as Nuni, you want to generally stay back behind your own minions. And then when you have a chance to last hit, then go forward to either hit them with an auto attack or consume the minion. Consume should kill just about any, almost any minion. I mean, that you probably only need to hit them once and then you'll get a kill from consume. So just, uh, you, you know, do what Mostly Harmless is doing now. Stay back, don't go forward recklessly, and don't waste your mana uh, on, you know, throwing ice blasts that don't really do anything, as Moose Armless was doing a little bit earlier. Remember so you see there, that's much better done. And now we want to slip back so that we're not taking aggression from the minions. So there, wasn't able to get that particular melee minion. And so, uh, and again, I mean, that ice blast is, there's nothing wrong with that ice blast. I suppose it's fine. But at the same time, you, you know, you don't always just want to, Hurl off mono uselessly either. Anyway, now I'm level six, so if they come forward too recklessly, I should be able to get a kill. Now that I have uh, Tibbers up, but their team is doing the smart thing and not coming forward too aggressively either right now. So again, we're just staying back by our tower and being safe. So look, hmm? I'm going to try and less. Oh, and the reason why I'm not throwing off any of my spells here is I'm trying to. I'm sitting at four on my little uh, stun counter there. I'm sitting at four because I can instantly pop off Molten Shield and then stun with Tibbers. I like sitting with Annie. I like sitting at four instead of having the stun itself directly up because oftentimes people, the other team will see that you don't have your stun up and they'll think that you're not, you're not actually ready to uh, drop Tibbers on them or something. Whereas like right now, everyone can see that I have my stun up and usually people play much more cautiously. So sometimes you can catch someone out, uh, catch them off guard by doing that. Also, I like to do that because that means that I go into combat with Annie's Molten Shield on. So I sit at four and then go in. Oh, and here Mostly Harmless goes into the brush to try and take on Rise. So I'm going to hit him with my spells and that gets a kill on that gets a kill on Rise. Mostly Harmless gets credit, but Mostly Harmless actually gets killed as well. And now Yi's coming forward, but uh, he's not going to stay in to engage. 
And for some reason, I didn't click on Tibbers here. So anyway, we exchanged one for one on the kills there. Uh, it was a very aggressive play to go forward into the bushes like that, even though we knew Rise was there. Uh, I mean, I suppose it worked out. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that, though. If you know that the enemy's in the brush, uh, it's not necessarily the best idea just to run forward. Now, notice how much damage Yi is taking just from our minions here. He, he actually took a lot of damage from the minions because they were targeting him. So there, I... I uh, Toss a disintegrate on him just to harass him, do some more damage, and if he comes out from beyond that tower, I should be able to get the kill on him. And let's see, can I get this minion? Yes, managed to last hit that one too. Of course, he's got his meditation, and there you see the farming stats. You might want to go back and pause it on that screen because I only had it up for a second, which showed that uh, Muki is, as you'd expect, as the solo mid uh, champion fire team, getting the most minion kills so far. All right, anyway, so now we're back here again. You can see that between the, the two deaths, the two deaths that Mostly Harmless has taken has caused him to be out of the lane a lot. So I'm pretty far ahead in terms of experience, and I also have more minion kills. I should probably have more minion kills just because Annie's such an easy champion to farm with. And here I was trying to hit Yi and stun him, but I actually misclicked on one of the minions, so I ended up stunning a minion instead. Which is a shame because otherwise he would have been trapped really far out of position. One of the weaknesses of Yi is that when he does Alpha Strike, you know where he's going to appear after he comes out of his Alpha Strike. He's going to appear right on the first minion, the first target he picks, he's going to reappear next to that target. So if you know what to expect, you can, uh, you can, you can trap him as soon as he comes out of his uh, Alpha Strike. Here, we're doing a much better job of positioning again, again, back behind the minions. Now, why I went down here was Muki went back to base, and that left the middle lane temporarily uncovered. So we weren't sure if the enemy team's LeBlanc had gone back to base. So I wanted to come down here to cover the lane just in case LeBlanc uh, was trying to push our tower. As it turned out, she wasn't doing that. LeBlanc went back to base as well at the same time. So it, it was a non-issue, but could have been could have been an issue. And again, why am I auto-attacking? Well, I'm trying to preserve my stun. Since LeBlanc is now not in the middle lane, Muki decides he's going to come up here with me. So we're going to come up here together and pull three into the top lane. And you can see the lane is being pushed, which is exactly what we want. They are coming forward aggressively against our tower, so they're being caught out of position here. Now we're going to come forward and engage, and I'm going to start by stunning them with Tibbers, and then... Muki gets off a great Ash Arrow, and that's going to stun, I think it hit Rise, not 100% sure, but they just have no chance. So that's an, that's an Annie Tibber stun immediately into an Ash Arrow stun, and they just have no chance. So again, that's how you want to initiate if you can. Now, I mean, granted, that's sort of an ideal situation, coming out of the brush with double stuns, chain stunning the other team. But if you can pull it out, they, they just have no chance. So... Uh, champions that have abilities that can initiate like that are pretty highly prized, so that's one of the reasons why one of the reasons why champions like Ash are so uh, so highly valued right now in terms of sort of the meta game. Ash is one of the probably the, maybe not the most popular ranged carry right now, but certainly one of the most popular. So that allows us, the fact that we killed the two of them, that allows us to get that tower. And now we're going to come down here to the middle lane and try to pull three of us against LeBlanc. You can see I'm cycling forward to my stun. That's why I'm doing that. So if we can all hang out in the bushes, but, but mostly Harmless just runs forward um, sort of by himself. And uh, as soon as LeBlanc sees that, she's going to back off. So... That was, again, a bit of a misplay. What we, I mean, we wanted to initiate by having me toss my stun or Muki toss his arrow. I mean, the arrow probably is still on cooldown, but something like that is what we would have done. So, um, again, just, just a little bit of a misplay from Mostly Harmless. Walking out like that, it just, as soon as LeBlanc sees that, she's going to back off and immediately retreat. And then that, that sort of cost us the opportunity to possibly get a kill there. So a little bit of a misplay. I mean, again, not the end of the world, but just kind of a mistake. Now notice Rise comes forward here, and Rise is effectively zoning me. That is, he's denying me experience and gold from these minions. See, because I don't want to get trapped in his room prison. If I get trapped in his room prison, I'm going to get alpha striked and then killed. So I have to be very careful. But their team then makes a mistake of tossing off Alpha Strike and Rise's Spell Flux because that's going to immediately push the lane forward. And as soon as they push the lane forward, um, next to the tower, I'm not in danger anymore. And I can safely farm up these minions with no problem. So I'm able to last hit that minion and Rise comes forward and gets hit. Now notice how I know that that, that uh, melee minion's going to be almost dead. So I'm going to be able to get that kill. Now see, look, two hits from the tower and then finish them off. That's how you want to do the, the, the uh, melee minions in terms of farming. So again, you can see how when they come forward aggressively, I stay back behind the tower. And so even though 
even though I'm very low on health, they're not going to be able to tower dive me, and they're not going to be able to get a kill on me. So again, positioning, if I had been in front of the tower there, they probably could have tower dove and maybe killed me, and then they would have gotten the tower. All right, this video is almost over. I'm just going to buy Merc Treads and then buy towards Rod of Ages, and then that will be the end of this part. Stay tuned for part two.